Okay, uh, so how many of you? Eight. Okay, alright. Uh, first thing is, sorry for yesterday, there's an emergency that I have to settle in and I still took a bit longer time than uh, I initially expected. Uh, so anyway, okay. Um, so who's, who's presenting? Nadia. Okay, let's hear your presentation. But uh, just a bit of uh, uh, the way how everything will gonna go. This session will still be like uh, how will it will be with my other sessions. So usually long case with me, presenter presents the case, and then what I want from everyone is what uh, what is your provisional diagnosis? Why this is your provisional diagnosis? What are your differential diagnosis? Again, I expect at least five differential diagnosis. Tell me why and why not. And then uh, comment on the presentation. I don't want to hear things like, okay, good presentation. No, good must have a reason. Why is it good? And then how, how the presenter can improve uh, the presentation. Okay, all right. Okay, let's proceed. Can you want to see my slide? Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Nadia Adilanti Jeffrey. So today uh, I'll be presenting a case. Hope uh, it's beneficial. Okay. So my patient is Amy, seven years, uh, seven years, four month old Malay girl with underlying renal disease, admitted to HTA in view of abdominal and periorbital swelling for two days duration. Associated with worsening shortness of breath for one day duration. So moving on, uh, regarding the abdominal distension, uh, it was sudden in onset where it's persistent throughout the day. However, that's not associated with any abdominal pain or any altered bowel habits such as diarrhea or constipation. And concomitantly, there also uh, she also developed bilateral periorbital swelling, which is painless. And there's no any skin changes around the eyes no, and the uh, uh, swelling person in the morning without any itchiness or any discharge from the eyes and uh, there's no blurry vision noted. Uh, her vision is intact. Together, uh, uh, before we proceed, uh, this history is taken from her mother. Okay. Uh, together with the uh, swelling, her mother also reported of reduced urine output where usually every day she will pass urine five times per day. However, throughout these two days, she's only up to three times per day. However, her mother unsure of the amount and the color of the urine, uh, but he, uh, she uh, claimed that there's no blood in the urine. Also, uh, she claimed of uh, doing urine dipstick test at home and stated that it uh, result in two plus protein. Then uh, she was together with the swelling and the reduced urine output, she also have upper respiratory tract infection symptom such as runny nose, productive cough, which is whitish sputum with minimal amount. Um, however, uh, she does not have any uh, chest pain or shortness of breath at uh, the first day. But the next day, uh, she suddenly uh, developed shortness of breath uh, associated with noisy breathing. But her mother claimed that she still can speak in full sentence and there's no bluish discoloration of the lips or any mucosa that uh, she noted. Otherwise, she developed no fever or rash, no joint pain, no gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea and constipation, no urinary tract infection symptoms such as dysuria, hematuria of frequency, in fact, she has oligouria, uh, no heart failure symptoms uh, such as pedal, uh, pedal edema or chest pain, no dizziness and no syncopal attack. She also has no history of sick contact, insect bites or drug or food allergy, loss of appetite or loss of weight. 
So regarding her renal disease, she was actually diagnosed with nephrotic uh, syndrome when she was three years old and four months, uh, where she presented with generalized body swelling for five days and therefore she was admitted to HTA. In HTA at that time, she was started with induction prednisolone, uh, 60 uh, mg per day, and she uh, successfully achieved remission at day eight. After that, uh, she had two episodes of relapses, first in April 2017, uh, second in October 2018, where each relapses, she presented with the same uh, presentation, which is the generalized body swelling. Uh, however, in both relapses, she uh, successfully uh, achieved remission and therefore she was stopped medication and denied any other relapse after that until this episode. She had uh, follow up nearby at uh, KK nearby and also Nephro Clinic HTA three monthly and her last follow up in, in December 2019. Uh, regarding uh, her penicillin medication, her mother denied any steroid toxicity complications such as any stray or any recurrent infection or uh, any hypertension. And also there's no uh, cushionoid features uh, of her such as moonphasis or thin extremities. extremities. So moving on for her past medical and surgical history, uh, apart from her nephrotic syndrome, her mother claimed that she had frequent nebulization at KK at, at least once per year. It's due to shortness of breath. However, she was never diagnosed with any bronchial asthma and she did not have any night symptom or activities limitation that uh, suggestive of asthma. And the shortness of breath usually is triggered by upper respiratory, respiratory tract infection and also dust. However, there's no history of any admission due to SOB or any intubation previously. Last attack was in July 2019. Uh, apart from the frequent nebulization due to SOB, she also denied any congenital or acquired heart disease and she never done any surgery before. Next, uh, she has not on any medication of supplements since she already stopped medication for her nephrotic and no history of drug or food allergy and her vaccination is completed up to uh, her age. Sorry for the typo. For birth, growth, developmental and nutri nutritional history, she was born via uh, spontaneous birth delivery with a birth weight of 2.8 kg and prenatal and postnatally were uneventful. So currently she is uh, seven years old. She is going to school at SK Basara. She's able to write and draw well, fluent in speech, able to converse well with others, able to mix well and play with friends. She had good achievement in academic. Mother claimed that patient was striving well from birth till now. She is up to her age. Her growth followed the growth chart and never fall below the two standard deviation. Currently her diet is a uh, Adult diet, four times a day with snacking in between. Uh, she's not a picky eater and her meals include carbohydrates, proteins and fiber. So uh, in short, she had a complete meal. Lah. So her family history, uh, both her parents are alive and healthy. Mother, 34 years old, non medical illness and father, 35 years old with allergic rhinitis. She is second of three siblings and her older sister had uh, allergic rhinitis and also bronchial asthma. Uh, no history of renal disease, autoimmune disease, or malignancy in family. However, this family has strong family history of uh, atopic disease, which is allergic rhinitis and bronchial asthma. And then for social history, she lives in Basara with uh, all her family members. Uh, her father is non-smoker, work as technician, and mother is a housewife. Her household income is about 4,000 ringgit per month. Her house is single-story house with basic amenities. And in her house, they have carpet, but no pet. So maybe this is a source of the dust. And patient denied frequent absence to school, but mother claimed that she's still able to score well in the study. So then, uh, moving on to physical examination. Mm, this physical examination was done in day three of exam uh, day three of admission. So on day three admission, generally patient was conscious and alert, lying comfortably in supine position, built appropriate to her age. Uh, not obese or not underweight. She is not in pain, respiratory distress or ill looking. Uh, she had branula attack with no active infusion. She uh, had bilateral periorbital edema, but no cushion of fissures noted such as moon face, buffalo harm or any uh, thin extremities. Peripherally, her hands were warm uh, with uh, capillary refill time less than two seconds and skin to go is good. So in short, her hydration pattern is good. No eczema seen and no period of sacral edema at that moment. 
uh, head and neck examination, fashion is pink, no pallor, no jaundice, no central cyanosis, and her hydration status was fair, I've told before. Throat was not injected, tonsils not enlarged, so she also doesn't have any oral or nasal ulcer, and leaf nut were not palpable. So for her vital signs, uh, in, uh, uh, she's stable, a normal tensive with uh, not tachy, not not tachy, not tachycardic, and also a febrile. Her weight is 26.8 kilogram in uh, 75th to 90th centile, height 110 centimeter, also in the uh, 10 to 25 centile. So she's not uh, under or over. We got, uh, moving on to abdominal examination, uh, her abdomen was mildly distended, but it moved with respiration. Her umbilicus was centrally located and inverted, no abdominal stri or scar seen. Uh, on palpation, the abdomen was soft and non-tender, no hepatomegaly or spenomegaly palpable, and kidneys also not palatable. The trap space was resonant. However, there's a positive sheeting downness, but negative quick trail and bowel sound present. On respiratory examination, uh, it's uh, unremarkable. Uh, no chest well deformity, no uh, intercostal recession noted, and also good air entry bilaterally with no added sound. Cardiovascular uh, revealed that the airport beats is not displaced, S1, S2 hertz with no additional murmur, and neurological examination was unremarkable. Uh, it's intact. Uh. So in summary, this patient is 7 years, 4 months old Malaga with underlying nephrotic syndrome in remission state for 2 years with no medication, currently admitted for relapse symptom, which is abdominal distension and perioperative edema of 2-day duration with associated with upper respiratory tract infection symptom for 1 day. Examination revealed patient in hypervolumic state, evidenced by mild abdominal distension, positive heating downness, and periorbital edema. No pedal or sacral edema noted. Lungs was clear with no cardiac failure sign. Uh, back, back, back. Yep. Okay. Let us go one by one. Okay. Uh, okay. Who should we call first on my list here? Let's see. <laughs> So below Nadia will be Hazik. So Hazik, and then after Hazik will be after Hazik will be Abir Abir Burhanudi. Siapa ni? And then and then Zur Ain and then Nurul Shahira, then Nurul Shazwani and then Rahil and then Amirun. Okay, alright. Uh, Hazik tadi, ha Hazik. Come, tell, tell, us. tell us your provisional, your differentials, and then comment on her presentation. Uh, okay, doctor. Uh, so, to be honest, this case is pretty straightforward for me. So, my provisional analysis Kacang, will. Kacang. Too easy. <laughs> so, my provisional analysis will be nephrotic syndrome. <laughs> Is that is that all? Is that is that the the diagnosis? Is that all? Uh, relapse, uh, nephrotic syndrome. Okay. Huh? Okay. So okay, fine. Why? 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 Uh, because the patient already been diagnosed with uh, nephrotic syndrome since three years or three months ago. I forgot. And uh, it was associated with abdominal. Uh, what? Three, uh, since three years old. Uh, since three years old, and then the patient uh, also presented with abdominal distension, with periorbital swelling, which is I think not uh, apa, but that no need for the renal disease, and also reduce in urine output. Okay. All right. Anything else? And anything else you put as part of your provisional or uh, your differential? For differential analysis, does it? Um... <laughs> I'm not sure that. <laughs> So differential, it can it can be things that are already ruled out. So if you have a child with oh. abdominal distension, 
we have periorbital okay, okay. What are the different generations that you need to think of? Because uh, if you have a child, so th this is something that you need to understand. If you have a child, known case of nephrotic syndrome, so then came in with abdominal distension, periorbital puffiness. Do not always assume every time is because of relapse. It may be because of something else. Uh. Okay. And, then, and then you need to remember as well, relapse, sometimes they have cause. So sometimes relapse because of poor compliance, is it relapse because of URTI, relapse because of something. So that URTI needs to be treated as well. That pneumonia needs to be treated as well. That bacterial infection needs to be uh, uh, ruled out, uh, needs to be treated as well. And then obviously nephrotic syndrome has some other infective compl complications, isn't it? So those you need to think of as well. So those are the things that you need to put in your differential diagnosis. Why? Because if you don't put them in your differential diagnosis, you won't think about it. If you don't think about it, you won't ask questions about it. If you don't ask questions about it, you won't get history about it. If you don't think about it, you won't examine it and rule out all these things. So that is why, as a doctor, we always need to keep an open mind. So someone with an underlying disease, if coming with a symptom similar to that disease, you are not in, you, you shouldn't assume this is just because of that underlying disease. You need to think of something else as well. Um, another thing is, are you sure that the initial diagnosis is right? Because this nephrotic syndrome is probably diagnosed by someone else. Probably it's wrong. So these are the things that you need to always think. Sometimes when people that labor, this patient has this underlying disease. Tapi, can it be wrong? It can still be a wrong diagnosis from the very beginning. So these are the things that you need to think of. Um, okay, all right. So this is the reason why always, even though other underlying disease, you still need to think of the differentials because the, the disease may actually not be true, may not be the same. So, and then after a few years, you may have more information. So sometimes the diagnosis may change because you have more information. And so you have more history, you have you have, you look you've looked at the pattern of the disease. And so sometimes you may make a different diagnosis. So there are so many problems macam ni. Kita dah buat diagnosis, kita dah, kita dah diagnose certain disease dah pun. Tapi and then with more information, more history, with better with better history, then with more experience, then you change the diagnosis. Walaupun dah beberapa tahun orang treat with the same with the same uh, diagnosis. So this is why doctors, you must always think. You must always think. You must always think about other differential. You tak boleh ada satu je uh, uh, provisional and stick with that provisional analysis until 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 year after. Tak boleh lah kan. Okay. Uh, Hazik, anything else? Yes, the thing. Yeah. Think. So for the uh abdominal dissection, uh, maybe the patient had liver failure. Okay. Why and why not? Why? Why? Because oh. the patient uh, presented with uh, edematous state such as abdominal dissection and also periobitic edema. Uh, why not? Because during the... Why not? Hmm. Why not liver problem? As the cause of the abdominal dissection and uh, during oh uh, no signs of jaundice maybe okay fine something no okay, jaundice fine okay good that's good okay lagi apa lagi you're on the right track what, what else Azik pergi mute pula ha eh. <laughs> 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 tak habis dah mute dah Lampau Saya tengok space bar lagi Let's go for liver, liver So, why is this not liver problem? Uh, not join this uh, During PE examination, there is no sign of organomegaly Hepatus plenomegaly Okay Stop, stop right there if if the child has liver failure, do you think you will you will feel uh, hepatomegaly? Hmm. 
I think not doctor. Why why not? Uh, why not? <laughs> Don't anyone, do it. anyone can help Hazik? If you have a child with hepatic failure, liver failure, will you be able to fill the liver? Will the liver be palpable? Uh, if it's hepatitis, it, it, it can be palpable, but if it's already chronic and becomes cirrhosis, it's not palpable. Yes, that is true. So the answer is yes and no. <laughs> the answer is yes and no. So early part of the problem, you may have palpable liver. There may be hepatomegaly. But later on, it will become cirrhotic. The liver will become cirrhotic. So when the liver is cirrhotic, the liver will shrink in size. So you won't actually feel any palpable fever. But will you be able to feel the spleen? Kalau si roti, spleen palpable tak? Spleen palpable ke tak? Palpable. Hypersthenism secondary to uh, cirrhosis. So, so basically Cirrhosis causes portal hypertension lah, eh? so portal hypertension will increase the splenic size kan? So yang tu yang you nampak the symptoms of the signs and symptoms of chronic liver disease kan? Signs and symptoms of chronic liver disease. This sort of patient, a child, a patient with abdominal distension, peripheral puffiness, with anasarca, with edema, you need to think of liver problem. And live, when you think about liver, you need to look for signs of chronic liver disease. And what are the signs of chronic liver disease? All these signs are associated with portal hypertension. Isn't it? Portal hepatitis. So portal hypertension. So what are the signs of chronic liver disease? Azik. Sebab tu kita kena oil lamp eh. Kita kena grill semua seorang. A sign of the hepatic failure such as uh, jaundice, uh, uh, hepatic encaf. Eh, doctor. Hmm. I'm not asking about hepatic failure. I'm asking about chronic liver disease. Chronic okay. Liver disease. Uh. Okay. Kita buka orang lain. Orang lain. Orang lain. Chronic liver disease. Signs of chronic liver disease. There are signs masa you buat general examination kan. You tengok ke tangan ada something. Dekat mata ada something. Dekat thorax ada something. Dekat perut ada something. Uh, okay, okay. Uh. So, uh, dekat tangan kita dapat tengok uh, duputeran contracture, uh, flapping tremor, leukonychia <laughs> uh, okay. and Okay. And then uh, at the at the axilla we can see the apa hilang bulu tu loss of axillary hair. Loss eh, of tapi hair. ni budak sikit. Okay. Uh, uh, abdomen we can see the caput medusa, the abdominal distension and also. Kalau dekat chest ni we can see the testicular atrophy. Dekat chest nampak apa? Oh, chest we can see gynecomastia and spider a uh, gynecomastia Spine. and spider nevi. Okay, alright. Tu bunyi clutter dalam English ya. Uh. Okay, ha, double proceed. Lagi? Apa lagi? Ada lagi? Ya? Okay. Azik, uh, before I you go. <laughs> okay, alright, alright. Okay. Comment on her presentation. Comment. What do you think about her presentation? <coughs> Is it okay? If it's okay, why? And how do you think you would improve on her presentation? Uh, doctor, uh, hmm. for comment part, uh, can we ask another one first? 
Kampau tu Aziz ni Takpe takpe Bidung tu punya mood baik Fine Takpe let's go to Abir Abir Burhanuddin Okay Tell us What is your professional diagnosis Provisional diagnosis And also your differential diagnosis So any problem that you think the child has And then comment on her presentation uh, So my provisional diagnosis would be a uh, fluid overload uh, Secondary to relapse nephrotic syndrome uh, Secondary to URTI So the positive uh, points for is due to the the edematous state of the patient She has a periorbital edema, the abdominal distension Might, dip, might be due to this uh, ascites And then uh, she has a uh, history of uh, Nephrotic syndrome diagnosed uh, at 3 years old Okay, okay So right. my differential diagnosis would be uh, acute okay. Wait, 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 wait before, before we go, something you mentioned about fluid overload so you think the child is in fluid overload and presenter as well put there in the summary a patient was in hypervolemic state isn't it? <laughs> so why, why do you think this child is in fluid overload or in a state of hypervolemic? Because uh, she is uh, edematous uh, has a periorbital edema of the ascites as well as uh, shortness of breath might be due to fluid uh, in the lung, the right fusion. Uh, anyone else? Everyone agree with her? Uh, anyone has a different idea? Anyone think that the child is not in hypervolemic state? Not in a fluid overloaded stage? Anyone? Nama tak tahu, mesti kita nak nama lain ya. Rahe, ha, sengih-sengih ni. Mesti ada idea yang pandangan bernas. Biasa orang sengih ada pandangan bernas. Hmm. Do you agree with Do you agree with the two of them? I think uh, from what I have read lah, uh, maybe they can uh, the child has undergo complication of uh, nephrotic syndrome. Uh, it, due to hypovolemia because of uh, she has she or he has edema mm. so, so 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 hypervolemia ke hypovolemia hypo hypo so you don't agree with that <laughs> you agree or you don't agree with that uh, i don't agree <laughs> you don't agree okay. why don't huh? because the <laughs> Sebab ada edema kan, so intravascular compartment tu jadi uh, macam depleted so. Ah, very true. This is something that you need to think. In an ed in an edematous child, if a if a patient is edematous, it does not necessarily mean that they are fluid overloaded. It does not necessarily mean that they are hypervolemic. Why? Go back to pathophysio of nephrotic syndrome. What happens in uh, nephrotic syndrome? Uh, a bit. I to cheat this. Yes. What, what, what is the pathophysio of uh, 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 nephrotic mm -hmm. syndrome? If you get, if you present case uh, nephrotic syndrome to me in exam, I'll definitely ask you about pathophysio. Uh. <laughs> uh, in so in nephrotic syndrome, there will be proteinuria. So loss of uh, protein and uh, albumin in the blood so they will be reducing oncotic pressure inside the vessel and uh, uh, cause <laughs> So reduce plasma oncotic pressure so what happens then? Uh, it will be a split uh, Extravasation of fluid from the intravascular to third space. So there will be third space loss of fluid, isn't it? There will be fluid shift. So proteinuria causes reduce in plasma oncotic pressure, which disrupts the stalling forces. And yes. stalling forces. So disrupts stalling forces, and what happens? 
it reduces plasma oncotic pressure, increases plasma hydrostatic pressure, and causes fluid shift from intravascular into the extravascular space and causing third space. Goes into the third space, isn't it? So what is the result usually? Generally, the result is hypovolemia, isn't it? You remember, we, we, we had, we had, I think you've had sessions with me, yeah? Yang dalam group ramai-ramai with all the fifth year. We, we discussed Thank about pathophysiology of, 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 of nephrotic syndrome among others. Can? Can? Nephrotic syndrome, there are two. There are two theories. Ah, uh, overfill and underfill, isn't it? Underfill theory is the is the classical punya theory. Kan? Underfill is the classical theory. So when underfill, it means that the patient is in a hypovolemic state. Uh, the child is not fluid overloaded. The child doesn't have enough fluid in the blood vessels. But the fluids are all in the third space, in the in, in, in the third space, in extravascular, uh, extravascular space. So this is the classical punya presentation in your protein syndrome. So for you to say the child is hypervolumic, or for you to say the child is fluid overloaded, you need something else other than, other than uh, being edematous. Again, a child being edematous doesn't mean the child is hyper or hypovolumic. Because volume, it depends on the intravascular state. What happens in the vessel, not in the whole child. Um, clear. So, what else do you need for you to say that the child is hypervolumic? Oh, maknya, kalau hypervolumic ini, maknya, it goes into the overfill theory. Kan? Uh, hypovolumia means the child is in the classical underfill theory. Ponyaphotic syndrome. So, what else do you need? from her presentation that you may actually suggest probably the child is fluid overloaded ke ataupun tak fluid overloaded ambil yes. mm. what do you think what else do you need for you to say whether the mm. child is hypervolumic or hypovolumic mm. because you're the one who says the child is fluid overloaded kan? yes mm. Mm. From her presentation, what do you think? Mm, Nadia? I, uh, ah, okay, you have your time to answer, yes. Okay. Huh? <laughs> okay, Nadia, Nadia, come. You, you said hypervolumic there, huh? The last thing we nampak from sekarang ni. Why do, why do you say the child is hypervolumic? Uh... Before the uh, doctor's explanation, I think it's due to uh, the uh, state. But after the explanation, I think uh, the uh, child is not in hypervolemic state because she is normal tensive. Her blood pressure is, does not increase due to the over uh, overfill. Uh, supposedly, uh, if there is hypervolemic, there will be uh, activation of the renin and intensive adrenaline. Pathway which will increase the blood pressure, but her blood pressure does not increase. So I think she is not in hypervolemic state. Mm -hmm. So blood pressure is one thing, and remember as well, before blood pressure change changes, the first yeah. thing that, what is the first thing? Pathway, yeah, pathway is the first thing that will that will change. <laughs> so look at those things. Eh? Look at look at those things. Another another factor is so pulse rate. Pulse volume, so pulse volume is something else as well. So pulse, rate, pulse volume, blood pressure. Okay, all right. Doctor, 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 I have a question. Uh, the hypervolemic state cause uh detain, apa? Next gen detention. What cause? What causes a detention in the neck, neck veins? Hypervolemia. Neck veins, huh? AVP. AVP, basically SVC obstruction, all those things, isn't it? It can be because of hypertension. It, it, it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, it doesn't necessarily show much that in this sense. 
Okay. Alright. Kita tak habis lagi dengan Abir ni. Ha, sudah. Uh, we're still waiting. For, okay, let's, let's hear your differentials. My differential, uh, first differential would be uh, acute glomerulonephritis because uh, first the patient has history of uh, URTI uh, might be due to strep, strep throat uh, then has uh, this, 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 is, this is one interesting thinking eh? Again, a child who has nephrotic syndrome doesn't mean the child cannot get AGN The child can still get AGN later on and uh, a child who has had AGN does not mean they won't get nephrotic syndrome. They can still get. So these are the things, this, this sort of thinking I, I like. So you need to think. It can be something else. Hmm. Okay, good. Bagus. Teruskan, teruskan. Uh, but the point, the point I guess, uh, the patient doesn't has a gross hematuria. Okay. What um, else? My second provisional would be uh, might be CKD um, because uh, the patient has uh, underlying nephrotic syndrome that might progress to CKD. Uh, okay. Then uh, why not? Why not? Why not? <coughs> uh, maybe we can confirm it with a uh, linear profile. <laughs> Okay. Um, belum sampai lagi investigation tak sampai lagi. <laughs> so why not? What what are the features of uh, chronic kidney disease that you can find in this sort of patient? Yes, the uh, periorbital edema, the abdominal distension. Okay, lagi. Uh, shortness of breath. What can you find in the face? I'm looking for two signs you can see in the face. Patients, patient. with, uh, patients with chronic kidney disease, which mm. doesn't, which is not present in this patient. Cello, mm, cello face. Cello face, yes, okay, all right. Satu, tick, satu lagi. Okay. If you look at the eyes, what can you see? Pinch, pinch colored. Uh, pinch. Yeah. <laughs> you look at them, you look at the tongue, you look at the hands. You limit. You limit breath, okay. Boleh ada you limit breath. Okay, fine. Acidotic breath, eh? Okay. Tapi, if you look at the eyes, you look at the tongue, look at the hands. Anemia lah. Anemia. Anemia. Oh. Ah. Aduh, hai. Hmm, apa lagi yang tempat kita tu? <coughs> so, they can have anemia. Why? Because erythropoietin, chronic disease. Okay? Fine. What else? Any other difference? Mm, it might be due to heart failure. Mm. Okay. Mm. Why and why not? Mm, because uh, the signs of of the signs of heart failure like edema just now. Uh, why not? Uh, because uh, she has no no underlying uh, like hypertension diabetes <laughs> and no history of congenital heart disease. Heart failure in children does it most commonly caused by hypertension? Mm -hmm. No, kan. Biasanya yes. is because of congenital heart disease. Okay, alright. Okay, okay. Cukup comment. I usually nak five lah. Eh. Tapi sebab kita buat online ni susah sikit nak cucuk ni. So tak apa. <laughs> so a good, a good. If you if you if you clock a patient well, you need ideally around ten or something differential. Then only you can ask the appropriate questions. Okay, fine. Comment on the presentation. Comment. Mm. Uh, good. Good presentation. Why good? Good must have present. Uh, she present uh, in uh, like a macam ada flow lah. You can see oh. that. Uh. Okay, anything else? 
how would you improve the presentation if it, if it were you? <laughs> Fine. Again, this practice of, of when someone presents and then you think about provisional, differential, it actually makes you, it should make you think. Because whenever you hear some, someone presenting, you need to think what is the provisional, what are the differential diagnoses. And as presenter as well, if your friend can get your provisional, you show that your presentation is actually properly targeted towards your, you manage to actually sell your diagnosis. And your presentation has, has adequate uh, discussions about all the differentials. But if your friend need to crack their head, apa lagi differential, it means that probably your, your presentation doesn't actually cover all the adequate uh, differential diagnosis. Allah, minta toilet pun nak minta je. Okay, so, so, macam tu. So, and then comment as well, because a, a, a good friend should always comment. If it's, if it were good, the only way we can improve, if, if it's good, if someone says, this is good because of this, then you can improve on that. You can, you can maintain what is good and improve on, the, on those that are good. And also, those things that are lacking or those things that, 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 that need, needs lots of improvement, then you can improve. So this is one of the features of a, of a good friend. Lah, eh? Okay, fine. Let's go to the next, Rahil. Okay, provisional differential comment. Okay, uh, so my provi provisional diagnosis would be uh, lack of nephrotic syndrome uh, in hypovolemic state. This is uh, due to uh, presence of preterm swelling and abdominal swelling, uh, which was in the morning. And she also had previous uh, diagnosis of uh, deficit syndrome. And she had uh, decreased urine output with a uh, urine deep state of 2 plus, uh, which uh, her mother uh, slept at home, uh, which uh, revealed a polyneuria. And also, uh, she has URTI symptoms, which uh, might precipitate the relapse. Uh, and then she also had uh, shortness of breath, uh, which uh, can cause familiarity with the mouth because of the uh, hypovolemic state. Mm. Rahil, Rahil, yeah. can you actually say this patient is in relapse? Mm. Yes, because kalau uh, relapse, can I say? Relapse it means. Uh, okay. Yes. You. 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 Nampak the way where I'm trying to guide you is what are the what is the definition of relapse in the syndrome? Ah. Uh, uh, yes. Ah, okay. All right. Yes. <laughs> what is the definition of relapse in the syndrome? Okay. Definition of relapse is uh when there is a urine abdomen excretion of more than forty milligram. Uh, um. Yeah, and then uh, urine dipstick of uh, urine dipstick of a uh, more two or more for three consecutive days. For three consecutive days, yes. So, do you think this patient uh, but not the criteria of relapse? Uh, I'm not sure uh, how how long did the mother test for the urine dipstick? Oh, uh, yeah. So no one previously tanya pun dekat presenter kan. Hmm. Takkan mak check sekali je tu datang kan. Hmm. Uh. Okay. Uh, Alang-alang we asking about definition. Let us you about other definitions as well. Or what, uh, define remission. Tak dengar lah Rahil. Cakap seorang-seorang ke? Oh sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, kalau remission, uh, urine did stick, trace or nil for three consecutive days uh, within 28 uh, days. Okay, fine. Tak apa. Uh, okay, define <laughs> steroid sensitive. <laughs> Okay, uh, steroid, 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 uh, steroid resistant. Uh, steroid, steroid resistant if uh, the patient does not um, respond to steroid after adequate, uh, adequate amount of corticosteroid therapy. 
Turut dependent? Okay, lah. fine, 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 fine. These are, the, these, are, these, are, these are definitions that you need to know lah, eh, when, you, mm -hmm. when you talk about nephrotic syndrome. I can assure you, if you get nephrotic syndrome in the exam, we will definitely ask you about uh, about these definitions. Okay? Yeah. Obviously lah, takkan kita tak tanya kan? Obviously kita akan tanya what are, what are these definitions, what do you mean by stroke resistant, what do you mean by frequent relapse, kan? Uh, so, uh, obviously we'll ask, we'll ask about this. Okay, fine. Uh, other differences? Mm. For my differences, firstly, um, plural effusion, secondary to heart failure because of frequent of edema and shortness of breath. However, there is no other symptom of heart failure such as apnea, uh, TMD, and she also had no physical edema and uh, history of congenital heart disease. Yeah. And then for my second, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you, you said you were saying plural effusion secondary to heart failure. Okay. okay, my question is, if you have heart failure and you are fluid overloaded, what will be the features in your lung? Is it pleural edema? Is it pleural efficient? Is it pleural efficient or? I was trying to say something just now. Is it pleural efficient or pulmonary edema? Pulmonary edema. Usually it's more pulmonary edema, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Rather than pleural efficient. Kan, heart failure usually is more, it can go into uh, pleural efficient, yes, but usually it's more of pulmonary yeah, edema yeah. rather than pleural efficient kan, yeah. uh, more towards hyperemic lung. If you buat x-ray, you can nampak hyperemic lungs, fluid overloaded, back, back wing signs, upper loop diversion, fluid in the fissure, curly B lines, kan. So these are hyperemic lung. Hmm. And so usually heart failure goes into pulmonary edema rather than pleural effusion. Okay, what are against pleural effusion in this patient? Mm -hmm. hmm. Oh, uh, no. Down the complication. Dullness on percussion. No, uh, dullness on percussion. Ah, uh, yes. Is it just dullness on percussion? Kalau tu lagi macam mana? Type of dullness. Uh, apa tu? Kamu sangat PKP ni lupa lah. Tidak. Tony dullness. Ah, Tony dullness. Ah, Tony dullness. Oh, lama betul. Bila Abah nak buka universiti ni? Aduh, hai. Ya, Tony Dalman. Tony Dalman percussion. Okay, hmm. fine. Okay, so kalau plural efficient. So first, Tony Dalman on percussion. Hmm. A entry, breath sound. Mm -hmm. Vocal resonance, vocal parameters. E increase. Ha? E increase. Ap Apa yang increase? Oh, vocal. Vocal. Oh, re, oh, vocal uh, resonance increase. Vocal resonance? Tak, itu tak ada. Itu... Itu tak di... No, no, no. Normal. Oh, normal, normal. Kau tak ingat dah, Doktor. Ah, sudah. Cukup lah. Macam Maggie banyak ni. Hmm. So, who, who else can, can help her? Kalau plural efficient, plural efficient ni Okay, plural efficient kalau tak berjawab nak exam eh, This is 100% compulsory to be fail lah eh, tau, eh. <laughs> Okay, plural efficient, what are the findings in plural efficient? Zur Ain hmm. Plural efficient, findings Help your friend Okay, lagi. Uh, breath sound. You letak satu skop. Apa you dengar? Huh? Video breath sound. Okay, fine. 
Reduce uh, vocal resonance and focal permitted. Reduce, Reduce? okay. Reduce permitted. <laughs> okay. Why, why? Kenapa? Because fluid. Uh, I okay, good. <laughs> but I always tell you. Uh, understand the part of the show. So, so problem kita, kita hafal. Bila kita hafal, bila PKP lama sangat kan, kan lupa lah. Sama juga nanti. Bila you you graduate nanti, you dapat dah graduate MBBS. And then you sebelum start kerja, sometimes it takes time. 8 month, 6 month, 8 month, 1 year. Kan aku bila lah, hopefully it's shorter lah kan. Tapi kalau it takes longer, sometimes you may you may forget if you if you hafal, if you get, if you have a eidetic memory yang boleh absorb jump sponge tu tak apa. Tapi most of us macam macam like me lah, we, I have very poor memory. So the only way is to understand the part of the show Okay, I will just tell you. Okay, kita 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 balik pada few things. First, is uh, bronchial breath sound. Is it normal or abnormal? <coughs> hmm? Normal. Normal? Why normal? Where is normal? Trachea. So bronchial breath sound is a normal breath sound dekat midline ni, dekat trachea area, main, main bronchial. This, this is a normal breath sound because all these sounds are caused by turbulent, turbulent flow. It's caused, it's caused by vibration, vibration, turbulent flow and things. So, dekat central, it is normal. Then, dekat tepi-tepi, dekat peripheral, we, what we can see, we can hear vesicular breast sound, kan? So, kenapa bila ada consolidation, bila ada pneumonia, we can hear the bronchial breast sound. Why? So again, why when you have consolidation, when you have pneumonia consolidation, and you can hear bronchial breast sounds at the peripheries? Why? Kenapa kan ya? I've told you this. Masa session yang kita buat dekat dekat auditorium, bukan auditorium, dekat lecture hall berapa with all your friends masa tu Masa sebab belum fix lagi kan, so masa macam uh, Why, 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 why? Uh, Because uh, the consolidation, uh, this uh, obstruction of the flow of the sound wave uh, Causing the... When, when the... Macam uh, <laughs> mana? Uh, because uh, solid, the the absorb wave, uh, the sound wave. So there's the diminish of the sound wave when the sound travel to the consolidation. Okay, uh, not 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 quite right lah. You have the general idea, but not quite right. So generally, is what which 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 conducts vibration better, air, solid, and fluid. Which solid. conducts better? Obviously, solid conducts vibration better. You ingat you buat Rini's and Weber test tu? Tang, ketuk kan? You dengar kan? And then ketuk sekali lagi, you dengar letak kat bone. Kan? Bone conduction is better than air punya conduction. Betul tak? This is Rini and Weber test. Kan? Ada belajar kan dulu? Kan? So, uh, apa nama? Conduction of sound is better with Solid. Conduction of sound is better with bone. Uh, that is solid carries vibration better. Solid carries uh, sound better daripada air. And fluid is the worst. Yeah, fluid is the worst. Told that. Then, so by two, bila you have consolidation at the peripheries, because of the solid consolidation, the solid particle. So these things a better conductor of vibration and better conductor of the sound. So these sounds are actually from the midline, tapi it has been carried into the peripheries where you oscillate. So but but the solid solid is a good conductor of sound, good conductor of vibration. So this is why. 
So, understanding that, baru you boleh nampak bila ada plural efficient. What happens? Bila ada, if you compare normal lung dengan you ada pneumothorax, dengan you ada consolidation, dengan you ada plural efficient. Bila you pekas, bila you pekas. Kan? So, normal lung, you pekas, dia resonant. Bila you pekas, bila bila dia ada plural dia ada dia ada pneumothorax dia ada air kat bawah tu what's going to happen to the to the to, to the to the sound increase hyper resonance why hyper resonance mm. sebab, sebab you ada satu surface you ketuk yeah. that surface bawah dia air bila bawah dia air dia akan vibrate lah so more vibration macam drum kan dia akan vibrate more sebab bawah dia is air. Air tak ada counter pressure. So dia vibrate more. Bila dia vibrate more, it will be hyper resonant because more vibration. Okay, kalau you ada consolidation kat bawah tu, ada pneumonia, ada consolidation. Bila you pekas, what's going to happen? Dan it will be dull lah. It will be dull lah sebabnya dia ada satu solid particle kat bawah tu. So dia akan dia akan vibrate tapi dia reduce in vibration because ada solid kat bawah tu kan what's going to happen bila you ada fluid bila you ada fluid surface atau ada fluid kat bawah tu what's going to happen dia jadi stony dull kenapa jadi stony dull sebab fluid has a counter pressure sebab tu kapal boleh, kan, ships can go on the field because fluid ni dia ada dia punya counter pressure dia. It pushes pressure up. Isn't it? So bila ada satu surface and then you ada fluid kat bawah tu. So fluid is a counter pressure. So bila you tekan, bila you bila you pekas, it won't vibrate that much because dia ada counter pressure dekat bawah tu. So this is what causes the uh, stony dullness on percussion. What's going to happen to your uh, vocal vocal parameters, vocal breath sound? Uh, breath, uh, breath sound, what's going to happen bila ada plural efficient? Kenapa dia reduce bila ada plural efficient? Plural efficient, kenapa breath sound reduce? Rahil, trying to say something. Hmm. Never. Sebab uh, Saya nak cakap Avala tu Sebab fluid is not a good conductor of sound hmm. Satu Yang kedua because your lung field is push Your lung field Paru-paru tu semua being push away Because of the fluid in the plural space So bila tak ada paru-paru kat situ, tak ada air yang masuk situ, macam mana you nak have the breath sound? Betul tak? Kan? Yeah. Okay, fine. So understand the Autophysiology of the sounds. For me, you will help lah. Okay. Fine. Kita dengan siapa tadi ya? Eh? Zurain kan? Zurain ke? Rahim. Rahim lagi eh? Takut. <laughs> Ah, tadi rahil lah. Ah, rahil lagi tadi. Okay. Ah, hmm. Okay. Hmm. Ada differential? Hmm, okay, my second differential is a uh, post-traptococcal glomerulonephritis. Okay. Uh, because of presence of edema, dicotulant output and uh, URGI. And patient also is 7 years old, so um, within the range of uh, PSTN punya, yeah. But patient has no uh, hematuria and hypertension. Okay, alright. Okay, fine. Comment on the presentation. Comment. My comment is that uh, first, maybe she talked too fast. <laughs> Some of the points I I missed out. Uh, but uh, I think she did a good job because she uh, uh ruled out many other differentials uh such as heart failure, respiratory abnormality, symptoms also she will out very well. Alright, so next in my list, sempat ini tadi Zurain tadi kan bawah ni. Ha. Yep. Provisional differential comment. Nama apa sebenarnya ni? Ain. 
Aku panggil nama apa yang korang tiga je kat situ eh Okay, fine Provisional differential comment Mana dia? Provisional diagnosis is a relapse mental disorder uh, Due to apa? Symptom uh, And also uh, Participate of mental disorder So that uh, Supported by Certificate uh, examination of only physical language. Uh, my uh, second uh, depression diagnosis uh, still uh, nephrotic syndrome but secondary to uh, uh, secondary to gomeron nephritis because uh, she has history of uh, URTI also. Okay. And also oliguria. Yeah. Mm. And then okay. uh, number three, uh, probably uh, kidney disease uh, because uh, edematous and also uh, oliguria, the extender oliguria. Mm. Mm. And also uh, abdominal distension. Okay, fine. Next. Others? Ada lagi? Okay. Tak apa. Fine. Comment. Comment on the presentation. Comment is uh, just like before, like you said, uh, no, not much of negative, negative symptoms, negative. Uh, you, okay, you, you, need more, you need more negative. Okay, what are the example of negative that you would want to ask, Nadia? Probably uh, symptoms like negative symptoms can be a, a secondary cause. So. There is a negative symptom hmm. of uh, SLE, like um, SLE and also immuno, 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 IgA, nephropathy. IgA, nephropathy. Uh, okay, lagi? Apa lagi? Uh, oh, okay, what are the other secondary causes of nephropathy syndrome? HSP. HSP. HSP, okay, yeah. So, okay. So, SLE punya features pun lah. Kena mention lah, eh. So, semua-semua features ni SLE, okay, lagi. So, SLE, IGA, lagi. AGN. AGN, okay, yep. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, fine. Dia ada satu makanan, makanan, uh, there's one tradition, kind of traditional, Malay food that can cause nephropathy. I don't think this child takes it lah, tapi mungkin orang-orang tua Melayu suka. Yang suka, uh, yang, yang busuk dah. <laughs> oh, ada apa ni? Kedas je, eh? berkedas. Jengkol. Have you had jengkol dan property? Jengkol apa sama you ah? Jering. Jering. Ah, jering. Jengkol, jering. Oh, jering. Ya busuk kan. Saya tengok lawa dia. Ah. So jering dan property. Jengkol kalau you buka buku dia tulis jengkol dan property. Jengkol ni Indonesian pun panggil jengkol juga. Ah. I don't eat jengkol lah. But I've seen. I've seen one patient with jengkol dan property. Okay, fine. Let's go to the next. Let's kind of go back to the next one. Okay, uh, next in my list is Nurul Shazwani. Provisional differential comment. Hmm. Um, so my provisional diagnosis could be nephrotic syndrome secondary to upper respiratory infection. 
So for my differential diagnosis, it's same like Rahil, uh, and uh, I can give, uh, so the first one is, uh, can be post-streptococcal gomonophritis. So the point four is, uh, the kids having URTI, oliguria, proteinuria, except the patient, uh, the kids that, uh, does not have hematuria or uh, hypertension. Okay. So the second one is, um, Primary edema secondary to heart failure. So maybe the patient had. Uh, can, 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 can you tell me one thing? Uh, okay, the other thing that is negative for post trap GM? Uh, the other one negative for post trap GM? From examination. Uh, Besides hematuria did, and hypertension? Yeah, which she didn't mention. Mm. Kalau you tengok dekat skin, boleh nampak apa? Oh, rashes. Eh, scar lah. Eh, scar. No, 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 scar. Ah. Scar pun ada. Ha? Scar. Impetigo. Oh. Impetigo scar. Kan post-trap GN, impetigo scar lah you nak kena cari. Faham tak? So, you, you don't you don't put this in the presentation because you're not thinking about it. Faham tak? Oh. Because when you don't think about something, what the brain doesn't, what the brain doesn't think, the eyes doesn't see. So betul. Yeah. 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 So what, what, you, what, what you don't know, what you don't think about it, you won't look for it. Even if you see it, you won't appreciate it. And so if you think about post again, you need to look for impertigo scar lah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, other differential. Uh, could be autoimmune disease such as uh, lupus nephritis. So okay. the asset, because the, the, kid, the patient is a girl and also right. the presence of protein urea. And then the points against is uh, there is no, uh, the presenter do, does not mention about the, tapi there is no rash, no family history of autoimmune disease and no mm. other features of SLE like better Okay, all right, then, comments. Comment, I think, I think she did well, but, uh, but maybe like Rahe said, it's too fast, <laughs> and also, um, and also, uh, I think maybe um, she should highlight uh, some of the complications of the uh, disease itself, like nephrotic syndrome. <laughs> okay, okay alright. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, Nuru Shahira. Okay, so uh, my professional would be um, yeah, uh, nephrotic syndrome. Uh, first by secondary to the RTI. So uh, points for uh, this patient uh, has a history of the RTI. And then also uh, presented with the uh, abdominal distension, uh, body muscle edema, uh, oligodia, proteinuria, uh, and then um, for my uh, differential, um, same with Wani uh, just now. Uh, first, uh, post-structural gomorrhitis. Um, points for it because uh, this patient uh, presented with the uh, oligodia, proteinuria, uh, and also have history of uh, URTI and but patient has uh, no hematuria, uh, no hypertension. Uh, second would be um, um, Nuru Shahira. If in post trap AGN, usually does the child come in with URTI at the same time with the AGN? Typ typically, typically, bila? typically, macam mana? What is the usual uh, history in patients with post trap GM? Usually, ada kah dia fever tu apa? Uh, your RTI tu sekali dengan dengan all the edema edema uh, things ke atau macam mana? Uh, no. Uh, 
Tak lah, you are the earlier lah Sebab it is a Okay, remember patofisio Patofisio, patofisio lagi buat dia Patofisiology of Egypt eh Patofisiology of EGN pernah masuk exam eh We ask clear what is the patofisiology of EGN What is the patofisiology of nephrotic syndrome hmm. What is the patofisiology of EGN Macam mana? How would, you, how would you tell us, enlighten us about patofisiology of post-trap EGN Anyone wants to help? Ah, ke, boleh, 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 boleh try. Saya dah. Ke, ke, ke nak call for help? Haziq lah, Haziq nampak macam, macam tengah ada idea bernas. Ah, tak, tak, Amirul, Amirul. Amirul nampak sengih-sengih tu. Dia kita belum tanya dia lagi walaupun dia lepas ni kan. Tapi kita, kita shoot dia sekarang. Amirul, tell us. What is the, enlighten us about pathophysiology of post-trap GM. Uh, for post uh, this is what I think ah. Uh. For post AGN, basically uh, the child will have a uh, uh, streptococcal infection at the uh, your RTI first, and then after that, after the infection have resolved, and then they will be uh, oh, kata apa? They will be activation of complement, and uh, after four to six weeks, and then after activation of the complements, so. Uh, after the result of near uh, infection, four to six later, activate the complement. This complement uh, next will cause the inflammation. That's why the inflammation will cause the uh, acute glomerulonephritis when uh, it go to the kidney. Anyone, yeah, simple. Simple. Anyone else not 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 correct? I'm your Meaning to say, it's not it's not entirely correct, lah. Eh? Anyone else nak bagi any other different theory? Uh, Rahil macam nak jawab tu. Statement sama je. Presenter, presenter. Nadia, enlighten us about post-trap GN. What to be sure? From what uh, I understand, when the uh, the what the first infection subsides, there will be the that the activation of the complement will cause the uh, apa, inflammation of the glomerular basal membrane where they will be increased in the glomerular cellularity. So when there's increased cellularity, there will be decrease in the glomerular blood flow. When decrease in glomerular blood flow, decrease glomerular filtration, cause uh, oliguria and then uh, as well as uh, decrease uh, urine output uh, oliguria. And uh, also, when there is decrease in glomerular blood flow, uh, there will be a feedback uh, mechanism where uh, activation of the RAS cause hypertension as well as uh, uh, the uh, oliguria cause uh, uh, oliguria, edema and as well as hypertension due to the RAS activation. Okay lah. My, my conclusion, eh, kena baca lagi patofisio of uh, post-trap GN ni eh. Kena baca lagi uh, patofisio post-trap GN So, post-trap GN, what type of streptococcus? Menatang apa? Streptococcus group? Group A Group A, group A, group A beta hermeneutic streptococcus Macam contohnya, macam strep pi, tini, siapa semua kan Okay, so, tadi sambuan sebut URTI Masih, dia mesti jadi URTI ke? Where can it be? Skin infection So it, it can be it can be URTI, it can be upper airway It can be ear infection, it can be skin infection as well Actually, quite common juga skin infection ni <coughs> So skin infection macam impertigo lah So impertigo is caused by There's a strep pyogenic, it's a group A strep semua so, group A strep ni dia ada berapa strain? Dia ada banyak strain lah tapi dia jadi dia ada cardio, cardiogenic and also nephritogenic strain kan? So yang cardiogenic strain lah kan go towards 
Fagul Fadizi. Fagul Fadizi rumetik ah. Rumetik. Hmm. Rumetik punya punya ni. Hmm. Tapi dia ada yang yang nephrotogenic ni will go for uh, AGN. Okay, what happens? Kan? Dia ada it. Yes, itulah word yang I was looking for. Molecular oh. mimicry. Molecular mimicry. So molecular mimicry satu. Lagi apa lagi? Kita nak dengar tentang macam ni lah. Kan molecular mimicry. Lepas tu kita nak dengar apa lagi? Kita nak dengar hmm. antibody complex deposition. Kan? Kan? Antibody complex deposition dekat mana? Gromerulin. Gromerulin based on membrane. Yeah. And this causes activation of your complement and also your inflammatory pathway. Sebab itu, you akan dapat changes in the C3 and C4. Kan? Uh, so all this causes inflammatory changes. So this inflammatory changes yang cause your hematuria and reduction in uh, renal, blood, renal blood flow, activation of the RAAS. Uh, so, This are the pathology show ya, yeah? and then resulting in oliguria. Yeah. So, benda macam ni lah yang kita expect you to, you to tell us. So, pathology of AGN, something you all need to read back ya. Yeah? Semua orang sekali kena baca balik ni pathology of AGN uh, and also nephrotic syndrome. Okay, fine. Kita patah balik pada tadi siapa tadi? Siapa tadi? Siapa tadi? Siapa tadi? Syahira. Syahira kan? Okay. Ha, Syahira. Apa lagi? Depresia? Uh, uh, Sebenarnya lebih uh, heart failure um, Because uh, there's um, shortness of breath uh, However, this patient uh, has no um, uh, No PDA edema, then no cardiac failure sign uh, And then that uh, can be um, liver failure Uh, due to the adrenal distension, uh, shortness of breath. However, there's no uh, sign of chronic liver disease like jaundice, kidney Okay, alright. Okay, ada difference ya? Okay, cukuplah. Comment, comment. I think uh, Nadia did a good presentation because. Uh, She able to lead us uh, to give the professional diagnosis uh, and also to run out the differential. However, since like what Nid said just now, uh, we need to assess more on complication uh, for the nephrotic syndrome. Okay, alright. Okay, the last but not least. Amirul. Okay, come on. Enlighten us. <laughs> professional differential comment. So my professional analysis uh, uh, will be... Biasa, 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 biasa yang last ni kita expect a bit more brilliant kan macam dah dengar orang lain punya explanation. Uh, I think for professional differential will be the same. Professional will be nephrotic syndrome secondary to uh, URTI. Okay, because of the uh, of because of the symptoms and also uh, signs that suggestive of nephrotic syndrome. Uh, For my depression diagnosis will be wait, same wait, 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 wait. One thing, you said nephrotic syndrome secondary to URTI. So this is not, this is not correct lah eh. Nephrotic syndrome doesn't cause URTI. But relapse nephrotic syndrome can be triggered, can be caused by URTI. Yeah. Uh, so, cakap tu kena betul lah. Okay. Nephrotic syndrome precipitated by URTI. Okay, uh, yeah. for my differential diagnosis will be post uh, streptococcal acuglomerulonephritis uh, due to the uh, edema, proteinuria. But the point is again is this patient doesn't have any hematuria or also hypertension. And then uh, for my diagnosis will be chronic kidney disease. However, there was no any signs. Amirun, 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 do you believe? Do you believe when the mom says there's no hematuria? Hmm. Maybe what, we'll... what is it that in her presentation that tells us that this history is a bit suspect? You need to actually recheck the history from what she has presented. Because ah uh, Nadia said that there was no any changes at the urine, means there was no any blood. 
Dia tak tak ada you. Mother dia cakap mother is unsure about urine color. Mother tak sure urine color tapi tak ada blood. Logik tak? You are not sure about the color but there's no blood. What does it mean? You are not sure. Tak sure urine color tapi tak ada blood. How can you be sure there's no blood when you are not sure about the color? Faham tak? So do you, do you think you believe that that history bila mak cakap oh tak tak pasti color lah warna tak pasti doktor tapi tak ada darah. Do you believe that history? Yeah, I will recheck again what the ah, color is supposed to be. Red, so yellow, okay. red. Yes, I always I, I always tell you kan, what mother says is always important but it may not be significant. Ah. Okay, fine. So counter check that history. So you're not sure betul ke tak ada hematuria ni? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, lagi? Okay. So, uh, my next infection diagnosis will be uh, uh, chronic liver disease. However, there was not any stigma of chronic liver disease in this patient. And uh, dia, dia tak cakap tak ada kan? Tak, kita tak tanya kat presenter balik pun stigma of chronic liver disease. Dia susah sebab stigma of chronic liver disease. Nadia nak present dia lah. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then last one on this is uh, heart failure. Okay, uh, for my comment, uh, uh, for, uh, probe, uh, apa, for good side is uh, another presenting well because in the history of presenting illness is very clear to us because uh, uh, he, uh, she tells us according to the system, systematically like first your renal urinary system and then go to the respiratory system and then go by this uh, systemic review to rule out other differential diagnosis. So that is uh, very good in history of presenting illness for us. And also uh, she also tell us uh, the, the history of the past medical related to the illness. Uh, that's also good for this history. However, the, uh, the negative part is I might say that in the Physical examination, there might be lack of something because of might be because Nadia did not think any differential diagnosis oh, such as chronic liver disease, okay. uh, and also other parts such as HST and e. Oh jam dah Amirul. Internet tak clear. Bayar bil tak? Sudah, we lost Amirul. Panggil dia Amirul ke Idlan ni? Eh? Mana gini ni? Eh? Ha sudah. Idlan. Idlan. Where are you? Hilang dah. Ha sudah. Hello? <laughs> ah, okay. We got yeah. back. Okay, fine. Sorry internet internet kat sini slow sikit. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, we just I just now. Where was he yeah, before, before we lost him? Dekat ha? mana? Dekat mana? Dekat <laughs> negatif part. Physical oh negatif part. Ah, uh, kat fizik. Uh, because of maybe Nadia did not think other differential diagnosis such as chronic liver disease, HST and also SME. Uh, get about the skin manifestation and also chronic uh, liver disease stigma. I think that's all. Okay, alright. Let us go back to the presenter. Tadia, what is your professional and what are your differential? Let us see. Okay. So for my professional, suppose uh, after our discussion, I want to change it to uh, <laughs> <laughs> relapsed nephrotic syndrome in hypovolemic state, uh, precipitated by respiratory tract infection. Especially Nadia, you mentioned the child has oliguria, isn't it? Yes, doctor. Okay, so if you have nephrotic syndrome, will it affect your your kidney function in terms no. of glomerular filtration? Your GFR will be affected, kan? So, maknanya, if you have oliguria, by no means you are fluid overloaded, kan? Mm. If you have oliguria, it means you are actually underfilled, kan? Mm. You are underfilled. Uh, sebab in nephrotic syndrome, your your GFR should not be affected. Hmm. Okay, alright, alright, continue. 
So, uh, my differential diagnosis first uh, it be acute glomerular nephritis because of the presence of URTI. However, supposedly, if I want to say for strep, it's supposed to be a few weeks before the URTI. So that's it's that's a few weeks, la, actually one week, sometimes five days, one week. Hmm. Okay. okay. And then uh, the points for also she had polyguria and proteinuria, but the points again is uh, no hematuria. However, we just discussed it, we need to emphasize more. And no hypertension. Next, uh, it's the uh, uh, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema secondary to heart failure because of the shortness of breath and also abdominal distension. However, uh, this patient doesn't have any congenital heart disease and no uh, cardiac failure symptoms such as uh, PND, octopnia, no pedal edema, no chest pain and no, uh, no heart disease. Also, acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma because of she has history of frequent nebulization even though she was not diagnosed with bronchial asthma but she has family history of ectopic disease where her father and her sister have allergic rhinitis also with uh, allergic rhinitis and okay. then, uh, Nadia, Nadia, uh, let me say something let me say something this issue of bronchial asthma do you think it is acute exacerbation? Dia, dia, dia datang dengan shortness of breath? Yes. Okay. Alright. So datang dengan shortness of breath. Okay. Fine. Okay. Good. You you put this in your your differential. Cuma you need to remember, in this child, kalau dia tak datang dengan shortness of breath, kan? If the child doesn't come with shortness of breath, still, you need to put probably bronchial asthma is part of your provisional event because provisional mm. issues several problems sometimes a child doesn't have just one problem it may be several problems it's a problem list of the patient and the child having this frequent uh, needing nebulization and then there's multi-trigger uh, causing this respiratory symptom there's multi-trigger there's strong family history of atopic disease so this is the second problem that you need to you need to you need to tackle, not just the uh, relapsed nephrotic syndrome. Uh, but furthermore, if this child presented with shortness of breath, you actually need to go more detail in, in terms of your uh, history and examination for asthma as well. Mm. Okay, so so again, provisional sometimes it may be a list. It may not just mm. be one disease. It may be a list. Cuma uh, I, I didn't notice this shortness of breath. Lah. Maksudnya, uh, it may be a, it's another problem that you need to tackle, but it's not an acute problem. Lah. Hmm. Tapi kalau kalau it is an acute exacerbation, is it adequate? That is the macam tu. Acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma. Uh, it need to be have severity as well, moderate to severe acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma. Secondary uh, to uh, URTI. Lepas tu? Lepas tu? Ada lagi? Not in respiratory failure. No. Uh, with underlying? Oh, with underlying nephrotic syndrome. No, no, no. no. With underlying? As asthma punya ni? With underlying? With underlying? Intermittent or? Apa? Persistent asthma kan? Asthma underlying, so newly diagnosed asthma, you can classify into sama ada intermittent asthma or persistent <laughs> asthma. So persistent asthma ni dia ada mild, moderate, severe. Kan? Because this is how you're going to decide whether should you start medication, should you should you start ICS ke tak, should you start other medication ke tak, according to the GINA guideline. Faham? So, asthma diagnosis should always be acute exacerbation, Kalau dia, kalau dia datang in acute exacerbation kan? Kalau dia tak datang in acute exacerbation, dia tak ada acute exacerbation lah kan? So, kalau acute exacerbation, dia ada severity dia Mild, moderate, severe, life threatening kan? So, acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma Dan, this exacerbation must have a trigger So, what is the trigger? So, trigger apa? Secondary to or triggered by apa? Cold, cold weather, hot weather, changes in weather, uh, cold drink infection, URTI, pneumonia, blah, 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 blah. So what is the trigger? So acute exacerbation, severity of the exacerbation, 
trigger of the exacerbation and then uh, of bronchial asthma and then you can ada dia punya background of the asthma so background asthma dia kalau newly diagnosed you kena classify into intermittent or persistent persistent ada mild moderate severe kalau dia dah dia bukan newly diagnosed dia dah diagnosed sebelum ni asthma ataupun dia on controller medication how would you classify Control, you classify to oh, control, control. Or poorly control. So control, poorly control or partly okay, control. Okay. Uh, partly control. So asthma diagnosis dia kena macam tu. Hmm. Uh, so patient ni you kena decide lah sama ada is it an acute exhibition of bronchial asthma ke tak. Then this is good. Huh? So you need to think about that. Kalau dia tak datang in acute exacerbation pun, you need to think probably this child actually have asthma as the background. Hmm. Okay, fine. Next. The next is uh, lupus nephritis. Uh, points for because it's a girl uh, came with proteinuria. However, she had no rash. Uh, also, just now uh, I said there's no ulcer, and she has no family history of autoimmune disease. What are what are other history that you should have for points against? Other history. Hmm. So you should to do no rash. Tak ada family history of autoimmune disease, no ulcer, what else? History and physical examination. Uh, no arthralgia. Yep. Uh, yeah. Anyone wants to help her? What are the other symptoms and signs of SLE? Photophobia. Uh, uh, ani, uh, apa, uh, and, uh, 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 Involvement, serositis, serositis macam semua 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 serositis lah, perikarditis, pleuritis, semua semua benda tu, kan? Uh, so serositis, uh, so all these features, you can rule out. They should be in your uh, your your points against. What else? Tu empat je difference ya, lagi? Empat je. Empat je. Okay, few things. Nadia, in your history, hmm. uh, before kita go forward lah, few things I wanted to comment. Okay, the first thing, kenapa you start with uh, underlying uh, kidney disease? Kenapa tak sebut je terus underlying nephrotic syndrome? Uh, because uh, if I said nephrotic syndrome uh, at the start, so maybe it will uh, it will cause me to only focus on nephrotic syndrome without thinking of any other uh, uh, such as uh, maybe I will forget about the uh, uh, gramulan nephritis if already stated nephrotic syndrome not, not to misleading the uh, diagnosis from from the beginning okay lah I I don't I don't I don't agree lah. Eh. If if you ask me, if I were to present this case, I would stay away by the way. But this patient is underlying nephrotic syndrome in remission, not on medication, and then currently presenting with her. Again, kita kena our presentation it should focus towards your towards our provisional analysis, but must be robust enough to cover all your differential diagnosis. Um, so being focused in your introduction doesn't necessarily mean that you are too focused, too, too narrow. Mm -hmm. You need to focus but you need to be robust as well. It needs to be targeted but it needs to be of, uh, uh, you need to cover all the differentials as well. If you, the, the problem with you being ambiguous at the beginning and then ujung baru cerita, it doesn't make sense. If you ask me, it doesn't make sense. Sebab mula-mula you kata, unless kalau you tak tahu diagnosis, Unless if you don't know the diagnosis, 
So you can see electronic kidney disease. But if you know the diagnosis from the very the diagnosis of the underlying problem, not the di not the diagnosis for this. If you if you know the already know the underlying diagnosis, then you can stay safe from the very beginning. Uh, so known case of nephrotic syndrome in remission, currently presenting with blah 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 blah. I think that makes more 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 sense. Lah. Okay. History wise, I think your presentation it, it is quite okay lah. Manya, it is you've covered most of the things. Cumanya, I'm still I, I, I think um okay. What are the objectives of any presentation? I, I will always ask this. What are the objectives of any presentation? The first thing is the first objective is to to over. Establish diagnosis to to get to your to establish your provisional analysis to get to your provisional analysis to sell your provisional diagnosis. Second objective to exclude other differential diagnosis to rule out your differential diagnosis. So that is why your history, your presentation, your physical examination, everything it should rule out all the. Differential diagnosis, and you should have at least five differential diagnoses. At least five. Yeah. Uh, baru you boleh tahu, be, the only way for you to ask the appropriate questions if you know the differential diagnosis. Kalau you tak tahu differential diagnosis, how can, what questions for you to ask? You don't know what questions to ask. You don't know what to put is important. Okay, what is the third objective? To look for complication patient. To look for complications of the disease because all diseases have complications. So look for complications of the disease. The, the fourth is to appropriate treatment. Look for complications of the treatment because all all treatment has complications. Even even not doing anything, and not doing something is a management and it has it own, its own complication. Uh, so to look for complications of treatment and management, everything has complications. I think Nadia has tried to mention some lah. I did mention about no coaching got features and things. I think it's not. I would want to know more lah. Eh. But yeah, if you definitely even if bronchial asthma is not in the differential, if you want to put that as part of your provisional diagnosis, then you need to look at the complications of. Uh, uh, of asthma as well complications of frequent nebulization you need to look at that uh, apa, what are the things that you need to look for in, in physical examination for asthma for asthma hmm. uh, on respiratory examination uh, we can have any generalized ronkai on auscultation ronkai lah jangan generalized ronkai you can uh, ronkai. any ronkai lah ronkai on auscultation okay. So they may have a uh, reduced and uh, reduced breath sound. Uh, if it precipitated with uh, pneumonia, for example, and also, um, uh, there'll be a uh, tachypneic, eh, uh, tachypneic, okay, that's very stress. Very stress. Is there any uh, intercostal recession or head sense alcohol noted? Okay. So, Lagi, yeah. hmm. Harrison Sarkas. Where is Harrison Sarkas? Subcoaster. Subcoaster. Subcoaster ke Harrison Sarkas? Subcoaster ke? Harrison Sarkas is the indrawing of the 10th rib. Rib ke 10. Kenapa is 10th rib? Dia lekuk dekat 10th rib. Kenapa dekat 10th rib? Dia bukan dekat subcostal. It's different. Kenapa dekat 10th rib? What is there at the 10th rib? Kenapa dia lekuk tenggelam tu, indrawing tu at the 10th rib? Spleen, doctor. Huh? I just spleen. Spleen, spleen on the left side. Yes, uh, 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 spleen. 
<laughs> yeah, right side. Tapi maknanya, uh, head and circus both side kan? Uh, so, why, why, why? Why 10-3? Apa kaitan spleen dengan asma apa? Diaphragm. Huh? Diaphragm. Yes. Your 10th rib is where is the insertion of your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is your main inspirat uh, your main respiratory muscle kan. Bila you inspire apa semua, your main muscle is your diaphragm. Kan? Diaphragm is the main respiratory muscle. Betul tak? kan your main muscle is your diaphragm so bila you banyak kali takip ni banyak respect distress you use your diaphragm banyak semua kan so you will pull your 10th rib dia akan de deform your 10th rib tu yang jadi termasuk ke dalam bila dia termasuk ke dalam tu yang nampak your Harrison sulcus it is not subcostal recession it's not subcostal it is at the level of the 10th rib hmm okey lagi apa lagi Signs of chronic asthma. Uh, there any evidence of uh, chest wall deformity such as factors? Yes, factor deformity. Yes, bagus. Lagi? Yes. Another chest wall deformity? A barrel chest. Barrel shape. Barrel chest. chest. Ataupun increase AP diameter lah. Kan? So, bila you examine the child, you need to show that you are looking for increased AP diameter. So, compare. Kan? Hmm. Okay. Okay, fine, 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 fine. <coughs> so, satu, so you need to go through uh, all those things. Eh? So, uh, sama, differential yang ada yang lain ni. Uh, Grumman FIT is the differential. So, you need to you need to look for lah. Uh, Impetigo, kan? In your in your examination, you nak kena check dia punya throat. Kan? Make sure tak ada. Tak ada, tak ada, uh, tak ada, uh, hmm, tak ada pharyngitis punya benda Kan, SLE ada banyak benda lah yang you nak kena mention <coughs> Kan, uh, so heart failure pun sama uh, You nak kena make sure, tapi you did mention some of the things lah uh, Tapi murmurs, gallop rhythm, semua-semua so benda tu uh, kena mention Then you need to think of other diagnosis lah. You tak mention sini dalam you punya differential ni tak ada liver. 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 I think that's why you, you don't, in your presentation tak ada mention pasal, pasal liver kan. Okay. So again, you need to think of all the all all these things lah. Uh, liver, uh, metabolic, maybe metabolic. Hmm. No. So you need to you need to think of all these things. And chronic kidney disease pun you tak mention. I think that's why dalam 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 can it be chronic kidney disease? Can it be something you know uh, already underlying so because of the previous nephrotic syndrome kan dia datang dengan si renal failure rather than relapse nephrotic. Boleh tak? Can. Yes, it can be kan. Probably the 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 the, the problem is not relapse. The problem is actually progression of the progression of the renal renal uh, of the CKD. So these are the things that you need to look for. So kalau ada CKD, you look for apa? Cellophasis, anemia, benda macam tu lah. Kan? Okay. <coughs> the other thing I want to mention is uh, Okay, you may, okay, your differential about asthma ni So the patient has definitely something problem with chronic or recurrent respiratory symptoms. So I need more history from that. Maksudnya contohnya, uh, apa lagi trigger? Okay, you mentioned trigger the dust, apa semua uh you mentioned relapse uh okay you mentioned pasal hmm. so maknanya how frequent dia punya dia punya nebulization to when was the last you mentioned the last tapi you didn't mention gap between the last so within one year ni berapa kali so gap last ni and then sebelum tu bila uh, pernah admitted tak because of respiratory illness benda-benda uh, macam tu Okay, lepas tu pula, satu lagi, your timeline pun I'm not quite sure Sebab, okay, you bagi date I, I'm always worry about the date Faham tak? You bagi date, you kata masa nephrotic syndrome ni two relapses First relapse in April 2017 Second relapse, yeah, first diagnosis in April 2017 First relapse Dia first diagnosis, relapse. first relapse in 2000 so, 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 so this is where the problem is You mm -hmm. didn't mention when is the diagnosis did, did you clock this patient ke you ambil daripada presentation orang lain? Uh, 
Oh, ambil orang lain. Ambil orang lain punya kan? So, when hmm. did this patient actually clock this patient? Uh, 2019. Ah, see this is a problem. Nampak? So, you clock, uh, so dia clock patient ni in 2019. Hmm. Kan? Sebab timeline tu tak sure. Faham tak? So, uh, diagnosis 3 years, 4 months ni masa tu, which year? Hmm. Sebab first relapse, first, first relapse, first relapse 2017. Second relapse uh, October 2018. So nampak your timeline. Hmm. So my point is always date is good to know, but more important than that is the timeline. How many years after that? How uh, how long after the first diagnosis, the first relapse? How long? Uh, so currently is is berapa lama? So after three years, after two years. So I think that is more, understanding the timeline is more important daripada you bagi date, you bagi October 2017. But what, what does October, what does April 2017 means? So my means, means, means better, uh, better to tell the year of the diagnosis when what month rather than the age of her with the mother that lah. So if, if you ask me, April ke 2017 2018 is not is not important. More important thing is when maknanya the first the first relapse is how many months after the diagnosis. Second hmm. relapse is 2 years after the first diagnosis. And currently is how many years before how, sekarang ni berapa? 4 years after the first diagnosis. Uh, kan? So I think that timeline is more important. Kalau you nak bagi date, boleh. Tapi you kena put that into context. Uh, from the very beginning, we don't know when is this kaki. Kaki ni can be 2018, can be 2019, can be 2020. So we don't know. Faham tak? So when we don't know, how can we put that in timeline? Uh, faham tak? So understanding the timeline is important. I've had one student, they present. Patient presented on Tuesday, the symptoms come in on Saturday. Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Monday. It's good to know, but you need to put that in context. From that. So meaning, more important is uh, date, of, uh, uh, date of admission. So how many days prior to admission? How many days prior, how many months prior to admission? Macam tu. You did mention something you mentioned. Uh, examination is day three of of admission, so it's okay lah. So I the student present. I I examine the patient on Tuesday. What what does it mean? Which Tuesday? Oh that. So hari apa date apa is good to know. Tapi more important is relation relation of that day dengan day of admission, day of diagnosis, month of diagnosis, years of diagnosis. So yang tu more important. Faham tak? Dapat tak? Did you get me? Yes. Maksudnya untuk tahu hari apa, exactly Tuesday, Monday, apa semua, it's good to know. But it's not important kalau you tak put that in context. Faham? Sepatutnya bila you dengar, bila your history, you kena boleh buat timeline. You boleh buat timeline. You boleh buat timeline. Allah mak tak nampak lah. So timeline, diagnosis bila kan susah pula nak tunjuk ni Diagnosis bila and then first, diagnosis, first relapse, you boleh buat timeline Macam tu, faham? Okay, so this is what I'm trying to say uh, And then what else? Uh, I think tu lah, I think that, 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 that's all that I want to comment about your presentation Okay, let's see um, Nadia if you were the if you were the uh, doctor in charge of uh, pediatrics, for example, and then you were asked to review this patient at ED, what how would you manage this patient in terms of investigation and management? Uh, in terms of uh, management, first, uh, first uh, I need to stabilize the patient, which is a research patient by the ABCD. So it's because she's uh, coming with uh, shortness of breath. I mean, uh, give her uh, oxygen uh, and uh, and secure, secure the airway, breathing, and circulation. 
so for the investigation, in order to uh, rule in and rule out my diagnosis, first uh, I'll do the blood investigation. I'll do uh, I'll take full blood count. Uh, oh, oh, I take full blood count and then I do uh, renal profile because she's un uh, have underlying nephrotic syndrome. Why? Why? Why full blood count? I want to see. Uh, because uh, when she is coming with URTI symptom, uh, she may have some infection uh, ongoing, so they may have leukocytosis. Uh, as well as if she has any chronic kidney disease, they may have anemia. Uh, for yeah. as well as co uh, coagulopathy, may have uh, thrombocytopenia if she has uh, any liver problem going on. And next, uh, I'll do an adrenal profile to look at her uh, real catenin uh, level also as, as well as the glomerular filtration rate. And then, uh, liver function test uh, to see uh, the liver, uh, liver enzyme, whether she has in hepatic failure or not. Uh, next, uh, I'll do chest x-ray to see is there any pleural effusion or pulmonary edema sign. Um, as well as, um, would you do abdominal x-ray? Abdominal x-ray, no, I'll do ultrasound. Abdominal ultrasound. And then, what else? Mm. Uh, so in terms of uh, management, uh, okay, I also do a uh, serum uh, anti streptolysin titer to look for any post-strap uh, evidence. Um, serum complement, C3, C4. Uh, okay. uh, maybe, uh, check urine analysis to look for uh, any presence of uh, 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 red blood cells. So, is, uh, is there any proteinuria? Is, uh, is there any nitrite? And in, to indicate is there any uh, infection in the urine? As well as uh, uh, urine microscopy to say is there any uh, RBC cuts to indicate is there any microscopic hematuria? So I'll do ECG to look at the cardiac function as well. And ECG shows cardiac function? Not cardiac function, the, is there any uh, change of uh, hypertrophy? Oh. <laughs> uh, also for lupus nephritis, I would like to do uh, ANA, serum ANA and uh, also uh, if it's uh, positive, uh, I'll do the double standard DNA as well. Okay, all right. For bronchi asthma. LFT, LFT. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, for bronchi asthma, what? For bronchi asthma. Other than chest X-ray, I will do spirometry. Okay. Uh, look for the FEV over FVC level. Uh, well, uh, and that's for investigation. For management, after resuscitation, uh, I'll give oxygenation and then if the, if the uh, investigation come out, the result come out, uh, I can uh, manage accordingly to the provisional diagnosis. If, if it's uh, relapsed nephrotic syndrome, first I need to eradicate the trigger, which is the upper respiratory tract infection. So I may uh, um, give her uh, as well as a uh, profit uh, antibiotic. Uh, because she is uh, idiomatous uh, for prophylaxis for any spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. And then uh, bed, bed rest. And, uh, and uh, I may start again for induction of the. Why, 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 why bed rest? Why bed rest? Mm. Uh, to uh, bed rest to. Uh, to uh, 
apa hmm. uh, avoid the dependent because if he uh, if she move around uh, there will be uh, dependent edema then due to the so, so 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 kalau doesn't move around so no dependent edema uh, tak juga move around will actually be better for dependent edema kan isn't it not, not sure so if 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 you move around your hmm. veins will actually push your vein will actually help your muscle contraction semua akan push so less hmm. less uh, dependent edema if you move around hmm. kan hmm. so uh, uh, because she's oliguria uh, uh, and uh, no, no, no. kita fikir kita kat bed rest lagi bed rest oh kat bed rest lagi Ah, why need you bed rest? Hmm. My yeah. point is, my point is tak payah bed rest lah. Kalau oh. if if you if your diagnosis is post trap GN, hmm. then bed rest is okay. Um, so post trap GN sometimes kita cakap dia uh, rest in bed, complete rest in bed, CRIB, complete rest in bed. Kan, kita suruh dia rest to stop dia boleh cause hypertension, nama semua hypertension has its own complication. Tapi not in this sort of case. Hmm. Uh. Okay, so no bad rest, ah? Huh? Tak ada, tak payah bad rest. No bad rest. Okay, so ah, uh, apa tadi? Okay, ah, uh, I start ah, uh, corticosteroid, the prednisolone. So I maybe I may prescribe her with diuretics to help her. So, with what, what is the dose? of uh, steroid you want to start because year 5 we will ask about dose eh? I want to start with 60 mg per day 60 mg? daily once daily 60 mg macam tu je? dia ada 60 mg per meter squat per meter squat oh, per meter squat per day, per day. Hmm. okay okay and then how long? Uh, how long how long how long for four weeks are you sure are you sure you want to start for four weeks uh, for the anti remission Yes, oh, until you okay. achieve remission. Four weeks is the first episode. Ah, okay, alright. Until well, remission. Until achieve remission. Okay. And then, and then, obviously, uh, in exam, we will ask you lah, what do you mean by define remission? That's all for the Okay, fine, mm. fine. Okay, okay. What else? So okay. if if you if you, if, you, if you achieve remission, then what 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 you do? Ah, uh, if it uh, achieve remission, then I'll uh, change to alternate day dosage. What's the dosage? 40 squat per day. 40 mg per meter okay. squat. Uh, okay. On a day. On a day for upper weeks. I don't remember. <laughs> the duration I'm not sure. Ah, balik ni baca lah. Tuan ni presenter. Presenter kena tahu apa tu ya? <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, okay, alright, alright, alright. So everyone can <laughs> watch like the sign of the syndrome. You match one, okay, fine. Again, again, play. And then start her on diuretics to uh, uh, I may start her on loop diuretics such as furosemide. Mm. And then okay, wait, 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 wait. Why are you not buying di diuretics? Uh, why nak bagi nanti to help her to excrete the oh tapi dia hypervolemic ah uh. yeah so what will happen if you give diuretics it will further further worse the ah yes it will worsen the child the child will go into renal failure the child will go into shock the child will die kalau you bagi diuretics Ah, uh, sebab dia already hypovolemic. The, the problem is not because of too much water. The problem is proteinuria, kan? Ah, mm. uh, 
so you shouldn't give nephrotic syndrome boleh tak bagi diuretics is there any case in nephrotic syndrome where you can give diuretics uh, in grossly edematous doctor again i i've told you gross edematous ke what, whatever type of edema doesn't show you the hypovolemia or hypervolemia so in which patient yang kita boleh consider nak bagi diuretics uh, when okay. patient is given albumin okay okay that sensible bila you bagi albumin you bagi yes true that sensible okay fine lagi when there is hypervolemia lah maknanya bila dia in overfill theory so nephrotic syndrome pathway dia dua it can be underfill or overfill so you need to understand the pathophysio as well masa bila dia jadi bila masa bila dia jadi underfill the pathophysio it doesn't start with with uh, with uh, with this you nak kena mention daripada awal apa changes pada podocytes dia podocytopathy kan so this what are the changes dekat dia punya podocytes dia apa happens to the charges the ionization dekat dia punya podocytes dia kan kenapa boleh ada proteinuria so all this you need to mention uh, kejap, 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 kejap. i have a call from my mo okay uh, where where are we just now kita tengah dekat kat apa pathophysio huh? uh, so you need to know the uh, pathophysio bila dia pergi underfill or overfill theory so bila dia pergi underfill apa yang happen uh, what what is the what is the problem so stalling forces apa semua overfill apa overfill is because of the activation of the RAAS system right? so activation of the ras and then causing oliguria and yeah? oliguria and causing hyper hyper, uh, hyper volumic state uh, overfill so it goes into overfill bila overfill baru you boleh consider nak bagi diuretics lah so macam ni you nak tahu dia overfill kan you tengok pada blood pressure dia so blood pressure will be high dia tak ada oliguria dia kadang boleh ada polyuria instead because you need to remember dalam 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 nephrotic syndrome the GFR is normal banyak bila you bagi albumin what's going to happen bila bila you bagi albumin dia akan absorb fluid daripada dia third space masuk dalam intravascular space bila bila fluid masuk dalam intervascular space with normal GFR what's going to happen even without diuretics urine output akan jadi banyak lah sebab apa sebab fluid dah more, more in, inside the intravascular space even without diuretics uh, so benda ni yang you nak kena clear so sometimes diuretics ni is kalau nephrotic syndrome you kena think several times kenapa nak kena bagi diuretics uh, Okay, so diuretics is usually you don't actually usually give lah untuk 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 nephrotic syndrome. Okay, alright, what else? And then uh, restrict salt intake for the patient to avoid the uh, salt water retention to be worsen. Okay, kenapa you nak restrict salt? Uh, because of the salt water retention in... Why are the, why are the salt water retention? That also in overfill. Oh, not okay. Overfill kalau activation of RAS or if you are thinking of post-trip GN. So in nephrotic syndrome, there is no problem with. Kenapa di oliguria? Is it because of salt water retention? It's about because of the RAS activation. Because so, yeah, fine. Tapi in this in in your patient specifically, it's underfill. Hmm. So bila anda feel the problem is not because of uh, salt water retention the problem is because of the hypovolemia sebab tu yang dia ada dia ada because of underfill hypovolemia yang tu yang because uh, causing the uh, oliguria kan so there's no role of salt uh, restriction there is no role for salt restriction in nephrotic syndrome even yang overfill there's no role for uh salt salt retention even in agn okay in agn in adult kita katalah uh, uh salt uh, uh, salt restriction tapi in surgeon kita tak kata salt restriction kita akan kata no added salt no added salt uh rather than salt restriction 
Tapi that is in AGN, not in nephrotic syndrome. So in nephrotic syndrome, there is no role for salt near restriction. So the pathophysio is different. The pathophysio is different. Even in in overfill theory, there's activation of RAS, tapi the main problem is the hypoalbuminemia. So this is the main problem. So you sort out the main problem. Okay. All right. What else you want to do? Uh, what else I want to do? Hmm. Oh. So, uh, like, uh, I said, no, I'll, be, uh, I'll give a uh, prophylactic antibiotic, penicillin B, to cover for uh, complication of the uh, complication of the ascites, such as uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, uh, as well as uh if the uh, if the result come up with a uh, hypoalbuminemia more than if the albumin less than 30 less than 30 so the next the next the next discussion will be how do you diagnose nephrotic syndrome Definition of nephrotic syndrome. Definition of uh, they have uh, proteinuria more than 300 mg per day. 20, 24 hour urine protein more than 300 mg. And then they have uh, clinical edema as well as hypoalbuminemia. Okay, uh, of, of berapa? Hypoalbuminemia of berapa banyak? Less, less than less than 25 this number saya nak tahu okey satu proteinuria less than 25 less than okey apa albumin 25 you need kena kena remember satu lagi selain daripada 24 hour urine protein what else uh, protein uh, more than 40 mg per hour Okay, 40 mg per hour. Satu lagi, satu lagi test you can do? Satu lagi test? Hmm. The morning. Ah, yes. Morning. Morning urine. Uh, okay. Urine PCI. Early morning urine PCI. Protein creatinine index. Kan? Of proper unit dia, urine PCI. Balik baca lah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Balik baca. So, urine, early morning urine PCI, urine protein creatinine index. So, ni satu lagi benda yang nak kena tahu. Okay, fine. Kita dah two hours dah. I have a call from my MO pun. I need to go and see a patient. Okay, any, so, the point is, semua nak kena baca. Banyak nak kena baca ni. Ha? Patofisio of nephrotic syndrome, patofisio of gromonephritis, semua nak kena baca balik. Eh? Semua nak kena baca balik. Uh, and then asma punya benda pun, I think I'm not happy still. Masa discussion pasal asma ni. So we need to read, read up a bit. So, uh, a bit. So, maknanya again, bila you present, bila you discuss, provisional kena clear, differential kena, kena clear. And kena cover everything. So, kena bagi your, your, your presentation must be more robust. Must be, must be more robust. Okay. Understanding of pathophysio is very important because if you understand the pathophysio, you understand what are the questions to ask and how to manage. So, the problem is actually because your, your strength in pathophysiology is not that strong. If you don't understand pathophysio, tu jadi pening-pening tu. Okay. Alright. Any last burning question? Because I really need to go. Two hours like this, long money. Huh? Any question? Tadi, clear. Okay, fine. I think I think that that's okay lah. It's already too long. I I I nak kita tengok satu baby ni kat kat delivery kat delivery room. Okay. Um, I think that's all. So balik kita baca lah. Eh. Nak balik apa? Memang nak balik ke rumah kan? <laughs> 
So kena take time baca lah. AGN and nephrotic syndrome will come up in OSCE, will come up in your theory exam. Again, yours, I don't know whether we can proceed with clinical exam tak? I think probably your clinical exam will do together with the next group which will be a bit more problematic sebenarnya lah. I don't know how it's going to Tapi anyway, I think uh, theory definitely will add more marks more tests for your theory yeah? so nephrotic syndrome AGN is an easy question to make for theory exam so that is why you need to read more so with the theory exam definitely will ask you about photofacial definitely will ask you about all this definition kan? Uh, it's a very good question for for MCQ very good question for EM, EMQ and everything kan? Uh, even Islamic punya ni pun benda banyak benda kita boleh tanya So it's a very good punya uh, type of theory punya exam So kena baca lah kan Kena baca dekat rumah tak ada buat apa tak banyak benda buat kan So kena baca lah Okay alright I think uh, let us end here Is it okay? Two hours is too long already lah for me Okay uh, let's end with us with Jafar Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Salam. Salam.